good morning and welcome back to the channel. So we're now on day seven of the South West Coast 300. So last time we left you, we were in Killeen at Killeen Caravan and Camping Park. And today we're off for our last full day on this adventure. So you wanna come with us? We set off super early after a good night's sleep and were soon on our way to our first stop of the day. Electric Bray is a gravity hill near Donour. The slope of the road forms an optical illusion making it appear that downhill is up and uphill is down. You reckon it's going to work? Is your work. foot off the brake? Yeah, it's not. And we're moving. we're moving. This phenomenon was originally thought to be the result from a magnetic or electric force acting on objects. We now know that it's just a natural optical illusion. Our next stop was the small fishing village of Donour, which dates back to the early 19th century. It was used several times for filming in Outlander and is home to Donour Castle. Oh, it's not even that. It's not that windy. <laughs> We're still breathing on. So the new castle was yet another castle that belonged to the Kennedys of Carrick. Um, they obviously have connections to Colleen Castle further up the coast that we were at uh, yesterday. Um, just I mean, obviously it is all fallen down and needs a lot of work done to it um, but it's been um, abandoned now for over 300 years it's still magical and although it's in a bit of a state of disrepair now in its day the castle would have been quite a sight to see We were soon on our way again to the birthplace of a rather famous Scottish poet. Hi there. I'm at the coach park. I can't really get anywhere else. Eh? <laughs> we are just now at the cottage where Robert Brown was born and lived for the first seven years of his life. Okay. Um, we have toilets up there, um, but also this ticket will get you into the museum as well, okay. which is two minute drive away, ten minute walk away. Um, it is a really nice walk, you just kind of head across the road and down the poet's path. It's signposted and it's like there's a lot of lovely statues and everything, some weather vanes telling the story of Tam O'Shanter. So it is a lovely walk if you're feeling it up to it. Yep. Um, and then over by the Brown the Museum, we've got our cafe down there, more toilets, um, our museum it's a bit more kind of traditional what you'd expect in a museum and then you've also got the old kirk down there where Rob Brown's father is buried very atmospheric and spooky right now okay. uh, not staged at all uh, <laughs> we've also got the monument and gardens and the brick down at the back which are all burns related and very worth a wander through fantastic so, yes, i am here if you have any questions at all This is the cottage where famous Scottish poet Robert Burns was born. Let's go and have a look. She carried two buckets. Oh yeah. I think it will be a net. Oh, there's a little bit So if you want to go to the Robert Burns Museum, it's included in the price and it's a 10 minute stroll from the birthplace cottage. Okay. 
You won't be stuck for fun family things to do at the Burns Museum. The displays in the museum include plenty of hands-on and interactive activities and more than 5,000 Burns artefacts, including his handwritten manuscripts. We were all in need of some refreshments, so we enjoyed a nice snack at the museum cafe. We then took the small walk across to Alloway Old Kirk, where Robert Burns' father is buried. So we're on the hunt now for Brigadoon. We next visited the Burns Monument and Memorial Gardens, which stand on a sloping site on the north bank of the River Doon, overlooking the Brigadoon. And this, guys, is Brig Odoon. So Brig Odoon was a bridge that was built in the 1400s and it would have been the bridge that Robert Burns and his father would have crossed every day to get to the other side. Gary knows more about Ravi Burns than we do, so he's going to tell us all about Tam O'Shanta. Well, we're all in the pub the night before. They got a wee bit drunk and nipped down to the local cemetery for a gander and the witches chased him down but his horse and as he was coming over this bridge here the witch wasn't allowed to pass over the water so she grabbed the horse's tail and ripped it off so I think he just went back to the pub again up the street no idea is that the end? that's the end the nice, end nice bridge though lovely what are you doing? it's a good job we've not got a horsey eh? Our next destination was Loch Doon, which is situated about 3 miles east of the town of Dalmellington and 18 miles east of Ayr. This is a popular walk, cycle or drive on a narrow hill road and there's a small cafe if you're in need of a hot drink or snack. left of Loch Doon Castle and you can't really get too close to it because it's all barried off but it's still pretty interesting so it says Loch Doon Castle was built in the early 14th century on the larger island in the loch when the water level was to be raised for a hydroelectric scheme the castle's fine Asla masonry was dismantled and re-erected here what? Could you put it back together in a hole? I can't believe that they took a 14th century castle out of the loch and put it here. How did they get away with that? We then headed towards what we thought would be our final stop for the night at Clattering Shaw's Lock in the Galloway Forest, where we hoped for a dark sky experience, but our sat-nav took us on some very scary roads where at one point we thought we were actually lost. That'll be fine. There's none. You can 
can stay in quite a few locations on Gallery Forest for £7 a night. So we had planned to stay here at Clattering Shore um, for one of the dark sky experiences. Um, but once we've, drawn, we've driven in here, it's just a big car park. We're not actually in the forest. We were kind of expecting it was going to be in the forest. Um, there is a chemical disposal point here, but not much else. You have to kind of walk into the forest from the car park. And uh, it's right next to quite a busy road as well. So we're going to move on and find somewhere else. This is what motorhome is all about. Nothing was really planned. We then headed towards Sankar where we had found a part for the night spot. Sadly, this part for the night spot wasn't suitable for us either, so we had to head off on the road again. drama trying to find a park up for tonight. We had obviously planned on being at Galloway Forest um, for the dark skies and staying in the forest tonight but it ended up just being a car park and we weren't prepared to pay seven pounds to stay in a car park next to a main road. So then we decided we'd just set off for our next destination which we would have been doing in the morning anyway up to Sankar. Um, we were just going to stay in a park for the night site um, but we drove down and weren't too sure about it so we just decided to come to our next destination which is Croic Multiverse because they do offer a um, park for the night option for £15 there's five motorhome bays and there is toilet facilities so let's go and check them out so you're given a code for access out with the opening times, which is after four o'clock, which I'm obviously not going to show. And I think we should hopefully be able to get a nice coffee here in the morning. In anticipation for our visit to the Croic Multiverse in the morning, I popped the drone up for a wee look around. That's all for today. We hope that you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next week for a new adventure. See you later.